Hello everyone, welcome uh, to Inspire and your Marianist moment. Uh, my name is Jennifer Duncan, uh, Jen, everybody calls me Jen, I'm the Executive Director um, uh, here at the Center and uh, welcome everybody. So uh, for the Marianist moment, I'm always thinking and sometimes I, th I think I overthink. You know, I saw recently a little boy, there was a clip of a little boy, and he's holding on to the rope that goes across the swimming pool so tightly, and his legs are up and he's crying, and someone comes over and they take his feet and they touch the ground because mm -hmm. the water was only this deep. Just totally overthinking. That's how I feel like I, I think some days, and I'm, I wanna do the best I can and share something that's so meaningful. I'm like, come on, Jesus, inspire me. And then, out of nowhere, Jesus is like, hey, keep it simple. Why are you trying to do something that's not you, inherently you? Just be you. Think about what you deal with on a regular basis and what is important. So as I was praying over this and trying to come up with what to say tonight, I was thinking of the Super Bowl. And I was like, oh cool, Super Bowl, okay. Big party, everybody gets together. Um, and then I started thinking that my family won't be together on Super Bowl. And I was like, hmm, we go trout fishing. Uh, my husband has a beef with um, a former NFL team and their former owner from St. Louis. So we don't watch Super Bowls here um, in my house. We go trout fishing. So we wouldn't be getting together. And I thought, oh, that's a bummer because I love family meals. Then this Bible verse came to me. I mean, literally, I was scrolling through the internet thinking, what do I really want to talk about? Meals and Jesus and meals. And Acts 2.46 says, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. And that made me think about all the times when Jesus was on earth, how many times he broke bread and shared meals with people. And how many times those are the Bible stories we hear about. So then I started thinking, that must be kind of important, sharing meals. Okay, okay. So I prayed on that a little bit. And then I started thinking about the everyday events of Jesus and how the everyday events in my life aren't all that different. Now, he's perfection on earth and <laughs> I am imperfection personified some days, but the main thing we had in common that I, f I feel like one of the main things we had in common was sharing a meal. Um, it's one of the most common occurrences in our humanity is eating in community with others. The Bible speaks of it many times. Jesus sat at table. Jesus broke bread with his disciples. He showed us how important it is to break bread together. And then another Bible verse popped into my head, and it's just a snippet of a verse. Luke twenty two nineteen. Do this in remembrance of me. So hold on to the do that in remembrance of me, because that's, I'm getting to that. Jesus surely ate with his family as a child and a teenager, as an adult. He ate with friends. Um, I always have this vision of Mary, you know, Jesus comes home from and she says, what did you do at synagogue school today as they're sitting around the table, right? They have family conversations and share meals just like we do. I bet he answered that question a lot. As he grew older and he was preaching and healing, um, it's noted in the Bible that he shared meals with his apostles on a regular basis. He shared a meal with a group at a wedding feast. He shared food with 5,000 people at one point on the side of a mountain. And another time after his resurrection, he shared breakfast around a fire on a seashore with his disciples. And he shared supper at a table before he died in an upper room. He used those times to teach and to connect and to bond with the people that were around him. 
And I started thinking, how many times do I take advantage of that? I usually just eat and we gab about what our day was and blah, 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 and then I'm washing dishes and on to the next thing. Then I started thinking about who he ate with, his friends, his disciples, his family, uh, people like Lazarus and his family. And then he ate with tax collectors and with Pharisees and people he didn't get along with or see eye to eye with. How many times have I avoided having meals with someone? I sit at a different table because I disagree with what they say. He used it as a learning opportunity, a teaching opportunity. I don't do that very often. He also ate with the sisters Mary and Martha, and Martha was pretty aggravated. That must have been an interesting dinner conversation. I've sat in an awkward dinner conversation before, and it wasn't very comfortable. I, I kind of ate fast and got out of there. Jesus laid back into it, it seems, and enjoyed it, and said that you should come and sit too, basically. Enjoy this. Also during these meals, I feel like Jesus, we can probably assume, gave thanks for his food. He blessed it. He maybe blatantly and maybe discreetly taught everyone that was with him lessons about love, about his mercy and forgiveness, and he enjoyed the companion of his friends. Taking time to sit with others and have a meal actually models what Jesus did when we participate fully in that moment. So me being a really simple creature is like, I can do that. I may not model his mercy so well or his love so well or his forgiveness so well, but I can model sharing a meal with people I love and with people I don't love and sharing Jesus with them in that moment if I don't take it for granted. So now, over the span of a year, if we eat three meals a day, that's 1,095 meals. Why has it taken me over 55,000 meals in my 54 year lifetime to realize that Jesus and I do the same thing sometimes and we can have the same opportunity as Jesus did to teach and to love and to offer mercy and forgiveness to others during a meal. That's pretty simple. I think it's important to remember that Jesus made time to have meals with people. And maybe I should too. And to not take them for granted. Sit and enjoy them. Um, and make the most out of them when they're uncomfortable. Following Jesus' model of forgiveness and compassion can be daunting, but by sharing a meal and recognizing the gift it really is, is easy. The second gospel verse that I told you about, do this in memory of me. He was breaking bread and sharing a meal with his friends when he spoke those words. It extends, uh, oops, sorry. Um, if you think about it in just the sharing of a meal, and being in community or communion with others, it takes on a more tangible meaning, meaning that we can emulate. It extends beyond the sacred Eucharist and becomes a call to connect and teach and enjoy life in the simple act of sharing a meal. So I mentioned it was Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, it's an estimated 112.2 million people will be either hosting a party or going to a party in America. It's a real big opportunity to sit and enjoy each other's company like Jesus did and listen and teach and model his love to others. Tomorrow's just a regular Tuesday in February. It's also a chance to model what Jesus did. And I think when we say do this in memory of me, it's doing a lot of things in memory of him. And one of them is simply having a meal. So when I break bread, physically break bread and hand someone a piece, or when I sit at a table, I'm gonna try to remember from now on, and I challenge you to maybe remember from now on, that in the simple task of sharing a meal with someone, we are emulating Jesus and modeling him, and we have the opportunity to extend his love to all those around us. 
So do this in memory of him. Um, with a glad and sincere heart, we can make each meal an occasion to build community and cherish the gift of shared moments. Amen. <laughs>